yeah, recently we had Computex. And at Computex, there were some kind of crazy uh, devices announced. Obviously, Computex always has lots of lots of crazy things. But there was some crazy stuff introduced or uh, unveiled, whatever term you want to use, in regards to capture cards. So we have one from Asus and we have one from Ava Media. Now, the Ava Media one, I am... Like, it looks really good, but Ava Media is kind of a bit wonky when it comes to having Linux support. I don't know if this is a UVC device. It doesn't make any mention of it. Uh, but the reason why this is exciting is now we are starting to see HDMI 2.1 capture cards. HDMI 2.1 basically removes most of the limitations we have around capture. Obviously, you still can't capture, like, 4K 360 hertz or something ridiculous like that. But when it comes to like your reasonable capture, the things that you're actually going to want to capture in a gaming context, it, there's pretty much no limit now. So this is the Asus device. This is a new model of their Asus Tough Box, which is something that's existed for a while. This just ne now has like a HDMI 2.1. So with this, um, let's see if we can find the specs. So with HDMI 2.1 compatibility, the capture box allows HDR pass-through of video support up to 4K 144 hertz. So if I, you know, if I had this set up with my my system, right, I could have pass-through basically all the time, and I wouldn't even notice that it's not like that is not just directly plugged into my GPU um, and delivers high quality video streaming up to 4K 60. 4K 60 video capture. Now I'm curious what would happen if you drop it down to 1080p. I'm curious what it's, if it's going to offer like 1080p, like 144 hertz. It probably should. Like, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Um, the data would allow it. It's just a matter of whether that's an option they have available. It also supports variable refresh rate pass-through. So if you have a variable refresh rate monitor, you could literally just have this plugged in all the time and not even notice you're going through a capture card. <laughs> You'd basically get the full specs of any reasonable monitor. Uh, it has two 3.5 millimeter jacks. It's certified OBS compatible, which I believe the old tough box was as well. Uh, onboard upscaling and downscaling, which is what usually exists in a capture card most of the time. Some of them are missing the, um, the upscaling part um, or the downscaling part. <laughs> the device is also designed with an aluminum outer shell to dissipate heat and uh, improve durability. Now, I believe the original tough box. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the original Tough Box did have some overheating issues. I could be thinking of another capture card, but I think this one, I think this one had some issues. Uh, but if it's overheating, just you know, put a fan near it or something, and it should be fine. Um, a compact design with optimal rear-facing connections allows for easy integration in our gaming space. Uh, RGB lighting on the exterior, no one cares about that. Standby mode including USB operating speed, uh, 3.2 versus 2.0. Wait, what? What does that mean? Standby mode including USB operating speed. I don't know what that means. Um, party mode, HDCP detection, normal on a capture card, HDMI signal interrupted, device signal issue, firmware updating. What? What is this? What? This is a really... Weird structure of a sentence. Um, the only problem with the Asus devices is that <clears throat> they have this this Windows software that is what you use to like control the lighting on the device, do firmware updates, things like that. Um, but I believe the old Tough Box is UVC compatible. Yeah, no, definitely is because it was one of the devices I was considering buying. This is probably going to be UVC compatible, which is. Kind of incredible. Also, apparently, they're making a PCIe capture card as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> I hope that Epos Vox ends up doing a video on this. Because if he does, and it's good, I may end up buying one at some point. 
So Ava Media also has their own one. Um, what is this one called? The Live Gamer Ultra 2.1. Wow, they've actually fixed their naming scheme. Oh, Live Gamer 4K 2.1. Wait, they have two cards with the same name? Oh. <laughs> oh, they, they call the, the internal card and the external card the same name. But I guess they have, like, different product numbers. Wait, no, no. This is 4K 2.1. This is Ultra 2.1. Wait, what? Did I read it wrong before? Am I stupid? Oh, I am stupid. It does say it. <laughs> So this does 4K 144 HDR VRR pass-through, okay. Users can capture at a frame rate of 1080p 240, okay. So I presume it does 4K 60 as well, because that would be... That would be the same data, yeah? Because 4K is... Four, yeah, 4K is 4 times 1080p. And then 60 is... Well, 240 is 4 times 60. Yeah, so theoretically, it's just structuring the numbers differently, but theoretically this can do 4K60 as well if the capture card exposes the option. Like, there's no there's no data difference between those two like, those two things. It's just, they said it weirdly. Um, doing frame rate capture of 1080p 240 just doesn't matter, like, to be completely honest, like, there's no reason, <laughs> there's no reason to capture 1080p 40, uh, 1080p 60, sorry, 1080p 40, um, 1080p, sorry, 1080p 240, that's what I'm trying to say, like, where are you uploading that, where are you streaming that, like, there is no functional reason, unless you're trying to do, like, slow motion, maybe you're trying to do that, but, like, besides that, you don't need to capture that. <laughs> like, YouTube supports... Um, does YouTube even support above 60 FPS? I think 60 is, like, their highest. Um, But I, I'm very excited for these capture cards actually existing. Like, it's, it's great that we're finally getting capture cards that are this cracked. By the time we get to the next generation of, like, consoles, there will be, like, more stuff coming out. But, like, this is where we need to be right now. And we're kind of hitting, like, a a soft limit on what people are actually buying. Like, most people are not going above 1080p displays. Like, if we look at the Steam hardware survey, I think 1080p is still by far the biggest. Uh, Steam hardware survey. I don't even know how big 4K is on the list at, at this point. Um, here we go. So... 4K, I guess there's two versions because you got like the different standards. Uh, and like that, I think that's an ultra wide. Um, 3%. 3%. And then 1.5 for this. 12.5% for uh, 2560 by 1440. And 1080p is only going up. The, like, the, <laughs> the funniest thing about this, right, is. 2560 is what's dropping. Like, not 1080p. People are just dropping 2560 because I, I, I actually don't know. Wait, why was there a 2 point... A 2% 2 rise in 1366 by 768? Wait, what? Because that's not the Steam Deck. What the fuck? <laughs> why? Why is that going up? I... I don't... Is that is that a 4x3 resolution? Wait. No, it's not 4x3, is it? No, it's 60 by 9. Yeah? Yeah? Um Aspect ratio. Yeah, no, it is 60 by 9. Who the fuck is buying? Like, I get it being a big number, because at one point it was popular, but who is buying thir where are you buying 1366 by 768 displays? Why are those here? I don't understand. I, I, I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know where these are coming from. <laughs> but I don't expect uh, 1080p to change for a long time. Like this, maybe 4K might become like a selling point. 
But like, no one, most people are starting to care more about like higher frame rates. So like, it doesn't, the, the, the higher resolution doesn't matter at this point. 